Well, good day, all of my friends across the globe today. How are we all doing? How are we all hanging? My name is Leaf, and as always, it is so wonderful to have all of you nice returning faces here and all the lovely new faces here. So, yes, we are continuing Sugar Pine Zoo. I still love that name, it's so saucy. But, um, we are continuing it on with a sea lion habitat, and I was so excited to build for these guys right off the bat. I didn't want to start off with the sea lion just because, you know, it, it felt like, you know, I needed to work up to it. And the prairie dogs were the perfect way to kind of like, you know, start us off a little bit. But these guys are the real showstoppers over here. And I love the animal that comes after this as well, but this is still really fun nonetheless. So I want to have two main viewing spots for these guys. I want an underwater viewing, and of course I wanted an above ground viewing. And that is pretty important when it came to like the little design of this habitat. Uh, I don't really plan these things in advance uh, for all my new viewers. I'm not really your planner kind of guy. I'm your kind of organic kind of guy who kind of does his own thing. I kind of do whatever I feel like and eventually it all works out in the end all you gotta do is learn how to love the pieces and have the pieces love you back I know it's very, it's very new world age kind of thinking but it helps me nonetheless and I hope I can at least share with you guys a little bit of my thought process going through here uh, of course I want a little bit of a centralized island um, you can see it pop up right there, and I'm just getting the water level to work over here. But of course, I just wanted to help you guys, you know, start to understand my process, and if anyone is interested in building kind of like me, I hope I can at least guide you guys to, you know, at least understand where I come from. At least a little bit of my exhibit design history and like, you know, my inspirations and stuff. So hopefully you guys can understand where all that stuff and all that jazz comes from. But here I am just laying out the initial rock work. I usually go over with rock 01 um, in order to kind of basically line up the habitat. Uh, it's not really what the habitat's going to look like in the end, but it really does help to give you a good framework as to where you're going with it, you know, as to where the habitat ends, where it stops, yada, yada, yada. And of course, I want to do some back back buildings over here uh they don't keep the shape whatsoever so everything that you see here will no longer be in the final version of the build i keep it a lot more drab which i really need to stop doing but it's still fun and exciting nonetheless i want to have the, like that beautiful splash of color if you guys saw simply savannah's gray seal habitat from like way back in the day that was like what three releases ago oh my god time has flown by can you believe we didn't have sea lions up until now i still can't believe it and they look so good in game let's talk about the sea lions so of course we have the california sea lions in game and still i'm not really a big fan of like the male size but that's just me but they are very very beautiful animals and watching them swim it's so mesmerizing like it's it's like they're beautiful little angels racing through the water and it's so fun to watch um of course i still do have some qualms with it of course their hitboxes are quite awful um i'm sorry to say i frontier you know i love you i understand all the precautions that you need to take but oh my god could that not have been done a little bit better that's my only complaint because once you actually see them come into this habitat they cannot move from this habitat they are not able to move from this habitat and that's something that very much annoys me but we'll actually get there when we get there you can see me start to work on a little lighthouse i love lighthouses that's something you guys should probably know about me both my dad and i we both spend a lot of time up in northern new england as well as you know southern new england all that stuff and when you live here you pretty much know every single lighthouse like the back of your hand so we have some around the place where we live he's entered a few like photo contests and won a few actually um and I like to go with him to all the lighthouses. I actually just went on a beautiful lighthouse tour the other day up in Maine, and it was absolutely beautiful. But you know what? That's enough about that. Let's talk about this lighthouse over here. Um, of course, I want to keep it very classic, very red and white. Basically, just, you know, keeping the framework all over there nice and bright. It's nothing too crazy. And for a zoo like this, I don't want the budget to be, like, you know, sky high. But I at least want them to have a little bit of fun with their money, you know? Like, have some very interesting habitats and whatnot. It also doesn't stay there. I have it to the side of the habitat. 
just to really help centralize like the area that you're going into. And I think I may actually do a gray seal habitat right next to this, just because. Uh, no absolute, no reason to, but um, just because I want to, and I love pinnipeds. So of course this is going to be like our little quote unquote pinniped point area. But moving forward, we also have a lot of awesome animals. The animal that I just built for in this zoo was the beaver, and it's such a nice little unique habitat. It has a little bit of a splash pad too, it's going to be so cute. And I may even be able to put like, you know, a little eatery right next to it. I'm not sure about that yet. I like, I absolutely told myself. I need to include the beaver sign as a camp, not camp, wow, that was not the word, the cafe, like a beaver cafe, I don't know, but we'll see, just go in Castorides Cafe, oh my god, that's such a cute idea, I'm sorry guys, if you're new here, I apologize, I like to ramble, I have ADHD, I go from A to B, like, going right to C, like, that's how I work. Um, and that's definitely how I build too. You can see me do a lot of different things at once and here I am trying to get like that nav mesh to work well. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work too well, but of course I do some planters over here. Uh, keeping the planters relatively fun with these faux rock pieces, just keeping it nice and gravelly. I feel like that is the perfect vibe that I'm kind of going for with, uh, sweet pine. That's, is it sugar pine? It's sugar pine. My apologies. I don't even know the name of my own zoo. This is awful. But, um, yeah, essentially just continuing the theming down here. And this is something that I will hold myself to do. Um, because Kalahari Zoo kind of got out of my hands. And all my other zoos, it kind of also does get out of my hands. And, of course, we're still using Mr. Tovez's wall. Definitely do check him out. He's doing some beautiful builds. If you guys love realism, Tovez is one of your boys to go to. He has such beautiful builds, and he also live streams a lot, and I like to pop in on those sometimes. So definitely do check Tovez out if you're interested in all that jazz. But of course, doing a little bit of a custom fence over here myself. I know, oh my god. Leaf making his own fence and not a blueprint? Oh my god. Someone call the cops. But yeah, I kind of want to do one with like the mesh pieces in there. And I think it came out pretty good. It has a little bit of a nautical theme. It looks pretty swanky in the end. And of course, lining it up a lot better with the Arctic wood. The Arctic pack was basically re redefined at this point because we have so many more Arctic animals that really actually do fit the Norwegian kind of theme that we were given. Kind of like the Scandinavian theme, I guess. But of course, it is so fun to do. And also using these stained wood walls, um, this was a very fun move over here. I think they came out pretty, pretty swell in the end. But of course, we're also using that slate uh, roofing tile because it looks pretty nice. And I will admit, I do bounce back and forth between speed builds over here, so I do apologize for that. Sometimes I hit stop recording and I continue building and I'm like, well, damn it. Those guys are going to miss out on that, but, you know, it's it's just me placing down a block or two. But, of course, here we are just continuing on throughout the entire habitat, making sure that our sea lions can actually access the water, because I built this entire pool for them and none of them are using it. So we'll actually fix that up right here to kind of make sure that is able to work. But you can see me really start to make it a lot more naturalistic, because when you often have plaster platforms like this, it's more so concrete, but plaster, I have a hard on for plaster, I'll kindly admit, but using plaster a lot more... It is, I don't know, it's cleaner. I like it more than the concrete. Hey, can you really blame me? But of course, moving through these all, just making sure everything lines up. And I sink some rocks in there as well, just to give it a little bit more of a texture. Um, hashtag texture, I'm making it a trend. It just helps it fit so much better. And here I am doing a little bit of roof work. I put the slate up here as well, just to kind of have it be a little bit more simple. I can't wait to see the zoo in the snow. That's good. I actually have it open right now. And you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do this without you guys even being able to see. Because you guys will see it pretty soon enough. But doing some rock work over here near the underwater viewing, I kind of took a little bit of an inspiration from this from like a, um, I don't know what you would actually call that, like a otter viewing. Yeah, that's what it was. So I kind of incorporate that a little bit and another part of that same otter concept art, I guess. 
uh, over with the beaver, so we'll actually see that when we do get over to them. I hope you guys will enjoy that. Um, I'm very excited for that one in particular. Uh, it's I'm looking at it right now, and it's so sick, so I hope you guys enjoy that one at least. But moving on forward, here we are just doing a little bit of TLC work all around the exhibit, just making sure the stuff lines up. I should probably fill it up with a few more... Um, how do you say benches yes benches that is a word that I completely blacked out on but um yeah I really do need to fix that up I'll actually do that right now because I already have the zoo loaded up and you know what I think it'll look pretty swell without it um, one other thing that we probably need to do is use the new animal stands or at least the uh, guest stands for uh, the animal talks I feel like that's gonna be such a fun little feature to play around with I hope you guys enjoy that when we actually do get there. It seems like it's going to be really fun to work with, so we will be seeing a little bit more of that, hopefully eventually. Um, I just got to get like the perfect area for it ready to go. But once we do that, it's going to be rolling on forward. But you can see me just start to finish up the rock work over here, doing a little bit more foliage. I love working with North American foliage. It is so fun. It's so rewarding. It just makes the whole zoo feel alive. And you know what, after working Kalahari, doing like all that desert foliage, it feels nice to be like back up north. I don't even know where this zoo is located. Let's just say Minnesota right now. We can pull a little bit of a Masula on all your asses, but of course, just making sure that everything in here is nice and beautiful. I love the bridge that I did. I looked away for two seconds and I made a friggin' bridge. I love that bridge so much. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but of course, using the cattails over here as well, just making sure it looks very aquatic. Just having a little bit of an emphasis on aquatics as we go out there through this entire zoo. Um, may even incorporate a river somewhere down the line, just flowing down from the mountains. We are actually using the scenario map that, um, you guys may remember, Leaf's Animal Farm. It was my little call to Gloria back then. But, um, this is actually the same map that it was based on. A little bit more edited, thanks to Kai's, uh, free build mod. We are able to kind of achieve a few more different things than the average Planet Zoo player, so it actually turns out pretty damn good in the end. Of course, just finishing up the building back there, giving it a little bit of a focal point. I basically just copy the same turret from the entrance building. And since it was kind of colliding with the lighthouse over there, I moved the lighthouse away just because, I don't know, it just, I wanted to some room to breathe I guess but here we are at the b-roll I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to like be sure to comment and be sure to even subscribe if you're new here I really do appreciate all my new friends but of course I will see you guys all in the next one enjoy our silly little sea lions and I will see you guys then take care and have a wonderful wonderful day bye now